Hello and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Tamaris Baranos and here's another lecture on perioperative and critical care transthoracic echo. In today's presentation, we will talk about the inferior vena cava, how to acquire the view, and how to make the measurements. Let's talk about the ultrasound probe position. As part of the subcostal view, you should also evaluate the inferior vena cava. Start with having the patient in the supine position, then place the probe just inferior to the xiphoid process with the indicator of the probe putting cephalide. You should be getting an image looking like this. This is what the inferior vena cava should look like. You have the hepatic vein, which is located right here, and empties into the inferior vena cava. Then the inferior vena cava that empties into the right atrium. It is very important to see the inferior vena cava connecting to the right atrium because it's very easy to actually confuse the inferior vena cava with the aorta. For example, in this image you first see the aorta which is pulsatile and it's not connected to the right atrium, but if you tilt the probe to the right of the patient you will start seeing the inferior vena cava. In this particular case, the inferior vena cava is right here. This is the hepatic vein, and this is the right atrium. This is just a cross-sectional image just to show you how close the inferior vena cava is to the aorta. So in this case, this is the inferior vena cava, and the aorta is going to be a few centimeters over. Let's make some measurements. In a spontaneously breathing patient, during inspiration, the blood flow increases into the right heart, and as a result, the inferior vena cava diameter decreases. To standardize measurements, ask the patient to make a quick inspiratory effort, or a sniff. We can measure the inferior vena cava respiratory changes and use them to predict what the right atrial pressure is. When making inferior vena cava measurements, the diameter of the IVC should be measured perpendicular to the long axis. We're also using M mode for precise measurements. There is two things we're focusing on. First is the diameter of the IVC and then the collapsibility of it. And we're using the collapsibility as a percentage. In this particular case, the maximum diameter is 23 and the minimum diameter is 30.9. This particular echo machine is actually going to show you the collapsibility. In this case, it's 41%. Great, so we got the numbers. Let's figure out what they all mean. We actually use this table to calculate that. Now let's go over it. If the inferior vena cava is more than 2.1 centimeters and less than 50% collapsible, that is a full IVC. So the right atrial pressure is anywhere between 10 and 20 millimeters of mercury. We take an average of those two values, so we'll say that the right atrial pressure is 15 millimeters of mercury. Now on the other extreme, if the IVC is less than 2.1 centimeters and more than 50% collapsible, that is an empty IVC. So the right atrial pressure is anywhere between zero and five millimeters of mercury. And we take the value of three as an average. Now, if we have any of the other combinations, for example, if the IVC is more than 2.1 centimeters and more than 50% collapsible, or if the IVC is less than 2.1 centimeters and less than 50% collapsible, then we have an intermediate value of a right atrial pressure of anywhere between 5 and 10 millimeters of mercury. So we take 8 millimeters as an average. In this particular patient, the maximum IVC diameter is 23. So that would fall into this box and the collapsibility 
of the IVC is 40%. So that would be right here. So the right atrial pressure in this patient is 15 millimeters of mercury. And this concludes the presentation on the inferior vena cava and the estimation of the right atrial pressure. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out our website, YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the lectures, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share.